Go ahead and go to a clip from August 28th, 1963. I have a dream, Martin Luther King. How different is this from what we see from the Justice Department and George Soros spending $33 million to start race war and a war with the police in America? I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. That part was key. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the poor of the Lord Well, we shall overcome certainly hasn't happened yet. And if you look at what the government has done, wedding black women to the state, blacks are obviously, by every metric and every statistic, worse off under the invisible or foggy tyranny of the great society than they were under the open tyranny of segregation uh, and that oppressive system. Because an enemy and an attack that is open will make you strong. An enemy that's creeping and, and cold-blooded is the plague, to paraphrase Cicero. The traitor is the plague. And by every real metric, health metrics, family metrics, economic metrics, on average, black people are worse off than they were in 1963. Go look the numbers up. It's incredible. And under Obama, in just seven years, double the unemployment rate. You know who else is in trouble? The middle class period. No matter what color you are, the American dream is in trouble. More debt. 110 million people not in the workforce. 47 million people on food stamps. Another 10 million or so on supplemental food stamps, that's almost 60 million. That's double. And you don't want to blame Obama, but he's the figurehead for the dumbed down public. For new listeners that tune in that don't understand what's going on, I got to say Obama, because then they know what I'm talking about. I talk about shadow elite, I talk about social engineers, they've been conditioned that doesn't exist. But let me tell you what's getting liberals' attention. When they get cut now under Obamacare from 40 hours to 25 hours, that's happened to more than 14 million people in the last two years since that kicked in. And now, here's the headline, Obamacare penalty may come as a shock at tax time, Washington Times. Going to garnish your wages, going to keep your tax refund, going to grab your bank account. <laughs> Remember, they promised you that wasn't going to happen. And everybody said, well, why is, the, why is the IRS the enforcer? It's right here in the bill. Shut up, racist. Well, the public knows that word racist. They don't know who Martin Luther King is now. People don't know who Chuck Yeager is. People don't know who George Washington is. I'm not kidding. You see the different polls out every year from college students and high school students where 40-something you know, percent can't name one founding father. Where 70-something percent can't name the three branches of government. I mean, I mean, the numbers vary, but you've all seen those. But let me tell you, they can tell you who the quarterback is for the New England Patriots. If they're from Florida, they can tell you who the quarterback is for the Gators. And those very same people on an elevator or, or, or at a restaurant will say, hey, how about that Cowboys game? That was a bad, bad call, right? And if you go, you know, I don't really watch the football. Oh, you're some kind of idiot. You don't know Jack Squad, do you? <laughs> yeah. No, I just uh, know about the battle formations at the Battle of Waterloo. I know about the Rothschilds. I know about them crashing the stock market and taking over the British Empire. 
1815, and I know all about the Charter of the Federal Reserve, and I know all about Pratt House and the CFR and British intelligence, and I've had intelligence agencies from foreign governments and domestic come and visit me. I live in the real world. See, I don't live in football land. Sorry, I'm not very manly. I've just been visited by the Mossad and the CIA and British intelligence and the FBI and the Secret Service and federal marshals. I just break national news stories every week. I am the most listened to radio broadcast at the Pentagon. And I'm not bragging about Alex Jones. What I'm saying is I live in the real world, ladies and gentlemen. And the real world listens. Not that I'm even perfect or have all the answers, but there's no other radio that even the establishment can tune into. Don't you think when you're an insider and know how things really work, it gets old watching CNN or Fox News? Don't you think it gets old seeing the twisting and not seeing a representation of how stuff really works? Because that's how it really works. You've got less than one-tenth of one percent that really has half the wealth. And they're waging war on the middle class and pushing higher taxes when they themselves are exempt from it. And I'm going to break that down in a moment. It's a fact. They're pulling up the ladders that everybody could get up. They've decided prosperity is not the way to go. They've decided renaissance isn't the way to go. They've decided dark age, infighting, race war is the way to go. They've decided totalitarian management is the way to go because the future doesn't need us and the elite have made the decision. And so even though half of an American history textbook on average in public school is about wrongs done to minorities to make people guilty, so they can then be guilty and do what Democrats and Republicans tell them to do, or they'll be called racist. It's all there with just dumb, empty-headed kids, white kids to feel guilty, and minorities, who are the majority in most areas, to then feel wronged and race-conscious and hateful. To bring in a new management system of racism. <sighs> Quite a trick. And to do that, they've had to dumb down the public. And they've done a fabulous job. Videos up on Infowars.com. Some Americans think Martin Luther King just died. That he was the first African American to walk on the moon. Almost three decades after Americans first observed Martin Luther King Day, some... Beachgoers in San Diego believe the civil rights leader only died recently, with others thinking King was the first African American to walk on the moon. King was murdered on April 4th, 68, nearly 47 years ago. But when media analyst and author Mark Dice confronted San Diegans with the news that he had just passed away, the reaction was not as expected. Yes, it was. These are not cherry picked. He's coming on. We've talked to him. We, we don't need to cherry pick either. It is shocking how dumb they are. They signed a petition to add birth control drugs to the water supply. Students at the University of California accepted abortion in a canned fruit juice drinks. Endorsing 19th century communist ideologue Karl Marx as the president of the United States. These are past videos. Obama supporters signing a petition to eliminate free speech and the First Amendment. Signed a petition to repeal the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. Supported a move to end the right to remain silent by repealing the Fifth Amendment. They signed a petition to support post-birth abortion up to age three-year-olds, making infanticide part of Obamacare. It actually is being promoted now for real. Signed a petition to support making euthanasia of senior citizens mandatory part of Obamacare. Actually, the author of it, Ezekiel Emanuel, called for 75 and up to be terminated. Can anybody say Logan's run? My mom's in that movie, I should ask. It's pretty funny. She's in a scene. Supporting a move to release all illegal aliens from prison, no matter what crime they have committed, and then giving them free U.S. citizenship. That's already happening. Signed a petition to grant Obama immunity from all crimes he commits while in office. In another video, San Diegans also expressed their view that not liking Mexican food was racist form of bigotry. See, all they know, white, black, Hispanic, Asian is to hate white people, even if they're white, and to hate anything pro-life and to hate any form of freedom. Just like in Germany, that you are not allowed to go out and protest open borders. 
anything else goes. But free speech is banned while the president marches for free speech. So let's go ahead and go to this video of the San Diego airheads uh, thinking that Martin Luther King was the first black person to walk on the moon. Here it is. As you probably saw in the news, uh, Martin Luther King passed away this morning. So. Oh, it's one of my favorite speeches. Are the Kennedy be, speech, uh, his speech, and uh, Lincoln, four score and... Are you going to be going to the uh, memorial uh, for Martin Luther King? This is the first I heard about it. I didn't watch the news. I don't even know where it's going to be. Yeah, he j news just came. He just passed away this morning of uh, of a coronary, age of 93. Oh, but that's it's not so bad. Made it to 93. That's so. good. Martin Luther King, the first first African American to, to walk in the moon, passed away this morning. Uh, well, just getting people's reactions to the, his legacy for the black people. What can people. I say? It's a uh, was a good man, no? Um, hope there's more people like him. A good role model for, for 